iPod, a thousand songs in your pocket. In 2001, Apple released the iPod. Boom, that's iPod. I haven't had one right here in my pocket, matter of fact. And I still use my iPods today. iPods came with a promise of a thousand songs in your pocket. But the biggest thing about iPod is it holds a thousand songs. But of course you needed to actually get to those thousand songs somehow. The UI relied on a series of lists that you accessed using a scrolling circular interface called the click wheel. The iPod also relied heavily on the aqua style elements in the UI. With Microsoft XP, they actually went in a very different direction into a more cartoonish style, but then reverted back to more skeuomorphic designs in Windows Vista. That was the first time when we've seen one of that translucency, blurred background and the glass effect. All the next Windows releases went back and forth between the like super minimal metro style tile-based interface and then back to skeuomorphism and translucency with their more modern fluent design. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. In 2007, Steve Jobs took a stage at Macworld and delivered one of the most iconic keynotes of all time. One notable moment from that presentation is where he takes the stage and takes full credit for creating the user interface, the mouse and the desktop. We've been very lucky to have brought a few revolutionary user interfaces to the market in our time. First was the mouse, the second was the click wheel, and now we're gonna bring multi-touch to the market. And nowhere in that presentation he mentions Xerox. But to be fair, Apple improved the Xerox ideas heavily, so they could be credited with reinventing the interfaces with how they look today. The focal point of the presentation was that we were gonna use our fingers to interact with this new device. So there wasn't gonna be a cursor, a mouse, or a stylus, but instead we're gonna use our fingers. How are we gonna communicate this? We don't wanna carry around a mouse, right? So what are we gonna do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're gonna use a stylus. No. We're gonna use the best pointing device in the world. We're gonna use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're gonna use our fingers. And of course, some touch-based phones existed back then, but their user interfaces weren't really done with user experience in mind, so they were pretty clunky and at best mediocre. The iPhone had it all, a multi-touch, gesture-based interface, maps, a camera, scrolling with your finger, complex apps, and a rotation sensor. And that was a little bit too much for most consumers to not be overwhelmed by it, because it was just so new and so powerful. People were actually afraid before launch that the iPhone was gonna be too revolutionary and it's gonna be too hard to use for like the standard people and it's just gonna be limited to the tech-savvy early adopters. To solve that problem, Apple heavily pushed skeuomorphism. So the real-world metaphors were everywhere and that made the interface quite easy to understand even to our grandparents. Books were stacked neatly on wooden shelves. You could scroll through music covers in cover flow, like flipping vinyl covers on your shelf. The calendar and the notes app had stitched leather cases and YouTube icon was a retro TV. The clock here also showed real time and the calendar icon was showing the date. The icons were also photorealistic here with insane attention to detail. And that approach made it instantly familiar even to people who were completely new to touch-based interface or computers. I remember in 2007 I spent my entire salary, so just one month pay, on an imported iPhone the first generation and I was so mind blown by how easy it was to use and how awesome it worked. So it was powerful but easy. And that is great user experience at its finest. Skeuomorphism was crucial to the success of the iPhone because the iPhone was stacked with features. Real-world references made those features instantly accessible and easier to understand. Back around the time of the very first iPhone apps, 2009-2010, we were building a grocery shopping app for iOS and did some research on design styles. And the wooden background version took most of the votes with some comments saying that it gave the users the feeling that the groceries ordered were already on their kitchen table. And while now the these interfaces may look a little bit dated or retro, we must remember and appreciate that they actually paved the way for all of our modern, awesome, slick UIs of today. 
And every seven years, the trend actually starts to shift back, you know, the pendulum swings. So it just goes from more flat design to more skeuomorphic design and then back. And we are now entering the phase when skeuomorphic design is actually taking more ground and becoming more popular, as you can see in the macOS Big Sur icons. So what do you think about skeuomorphism? Is it gonna return in some form or is it gonna be flat design all the way? Let me know in the comments below and as usual, thanks for watching, like, subscribe and share the video, it helps the channel grow and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers! Good morning! Yes, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go, please. Uh -huh.